Hello YouTube, it's Anthony Mathenia and I'm coming to you today with another comic book coloring tutorial. And today what I'm going to be talking about is doing halftone dot effects on panel backgrounds. And to give you an idea of exactly what I'm talking about, here's page 10 from the first issue of the comic book Chew. And one of the things that Rob Guillory does a lot of is adding a dot halftone effect to his panel backgrounds. And what this kind of does, it takes a flat panel and gives it some texture. It kind of pops it out from the rest of the page. It adds a little bit of a variation to the page. And it just kind of all around looks pretty cool. Um, I hope this isn't a big spoiler. Again, this is issue one of uh, Chew. Uh, pick up the first trade. It's 10 bucks. You'll like it. So the page that I'm going to be working with is something that I just got from artist Ellis Ray. And... He and I are collaborating on a short, a comic short for uh, the next Stash Anthology, which is on the Seven Deadly Sins. Ellis and I are tackling Gluttony. And how. I just got this line art from him, and it's really cool. Uh, what I've done so far is not much. I've just done my initial color separations, my flats. And the colors that I've chosen here are not the final colors by any means. When I do my flats... I kind of pick out something that's roughly there and refine. Um, the important thing is to just mainly break up the areas. Break up the skin from the background or the teeth from the skin. So the panel that we're going to be doing is this panel here with our happy tribal chief. And what I want to do is add a dot halftone effect to the, uh, the purple background here. And probably the easiest way to do this is to just pick out a halftone or dot brush. And if you Google halftone Photoshop brush or dot brush, you're going to find several selections on the internet. Uh, the one that I'm using, I got a free brush set from a website called Premium Pixels, 20 high resolution halftone dot brushes, just to give you an example of uh, kind of what's out there. And these brushes are really cool and free. So what we're going to do is create a new layer. And it's going to sit below my line art layer and above my flat color layer. And I'm just going to call this halftone background. So go to my pencil tool and I'm going to pick out one of these uh, halftones I got. And just drop it in. Now what you see here is we've got the dots, but hey, it's all over the, the thing. It's not just on the background. This is probably not what you want unless maybe you're doing something where the guy's got a chicken pox or something like that. So how do we just do the panel background? Let's back up. Let's undo that. I'm going to go to my flat layer, and we're just going to select this purple background with the magic wand tool. Now one of the reasons that when I do my flatting that I don't use anti-alias is so when I do selections like this I'm able to select just these solid blocks of color. Now if this was uh, had anti-alias on when I did these uh, fills you wouldn't have purple and brown here. You wouldn't have uh, you know ebony and ivory. You would have um, some kind of intermediate colors that kind of makes it look like it's fading into each other. You don't want that. You want this kind of jaggedy nonsense. So when you do your selections with your magic wand tool, it's only going to pick out just the solid block of color, even with the tolerance set all the way down to zero. So this is good not just for doing backgrounds, but for doing things like um, well, highlight shading. For instance, if I only wanted to work with uh, our guy's shirt here, I could just select his shirt. If I wanted to change out um, his skin tone here, it's as easy as selecting that and doing a fill. So, again, we're going to select our purple background here and go back to our halftone layer. And then I pull out one of the brushes there. And we're just going to drop it in. There you go. It's as easy as that. I'm going to back up and show you a couple different ones. They've got 
a few here. Again, they're free. They're cool. Check them out. I put a uh, link in the video description. So doing it can be as easy as that. Um, I'm going to show you another way. It's a little more complicated, but it's a way that I use to kind of get something that's more custom than what a brush set can offer sometimes. So let's go ahead and delete that area again. Just going to undo it. To start off, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to do a selection of the area that I'm wanting to do a uh, halftone dot effect on. It can be a little bit bigger. Um, you don't want it to be any smaller than the area you're working with. So I hit edit and then I'm going to copy. And then I'm going to create a new Photoshop page. Now the reason I did that with the selection and the copying is when I create a new page, the width and the height of my new page is automatically going to be set to what I copied. So it just it's a little bit of a shortcut. I change the color mode to grayscale. That's going to be important. I don't have to give this a name, but let's do it just for clarity's sake. Halftone dot page extravaganza. Did I spell that right? Probably not. So I have a grayscale page. It's sized to uh, this area here. I'm going to choose a color gray from one of my 50 shades of gray I have. And using the fill bucket, I'm going to drop in that gray. Now we have a gray uh, solid. How do, how do we get um, dots? Go to image mode. Change the mode to bitmap. And the method we want is halftone screen, so that's right. And then we have these options here. We want the shape to be round. We're working with dots, but there's diamonds, ellipses, squares, crosses, uh, which can also be fun depending on what you want to do. The frequency and the angle is going to control um, the size of our dots. I'm going to show it to you first with 30. Or we're going to undo that and do it again, this time with 20. So you see changing um, the, the frequency is going to change the size of the dots. I mean, we could crank this really down to um, even like uh, 10, you get a lot bigger ones. And also, the shade of gray is also going to affect it somewhat. So if I go to that, bit that, see, does something like that. So you can kind of play around with different combinations of shades and frequencies and to get the kind of dots that you want. So I'm going to go with this one here, which is very kind of close to how they use theirs, maybe slightly bigger. I have black on white. Um, it's not necessarily what I want. So what I'm going to do is change this and give it a color. So in order to do that, I first have to go from bitmap to grayscale mode. And then from grayscale mode to CMYK is the mode I color with. What I want to do is first give the white background a color. Like that. Now using the magic wand, I'm going to go ahead and select that area. And then I'm going to invert the selection because I want to do the black. So I go to edit, or rather select, and then inverse. Now, the, the black here, if I did a fill, I'll just show you what that does real quick. The black here is never always solid. So if I go here... See, I got those black dots in there. Yeah, that's not the greatest. 
I could take care of that in a couple different ways. I could crank up the tolerance, and that'll take care of it. Or another way to do that is to just delete that area, fill it with white, and then refill it with a blue. A couple different ways to do that. So now what I want to do is copy this and put it back into my uh, comic page I'm working on. So in order to do that, I'm going to select all, and I'm going to copy it. And I go back to my page here, I go to my halftone layer, and then I hit edit, and then paste. Bam. And it drops it in. But again, we have the same problem. It is covering everything, not just um, the background. How do we take care of that? Well, we go to our flat layer again, and I'm going to turn off this one, the halftone layer, just so you know what I'm doing. I go to my flat layer, and I'm going to select the purple again. And then I go back to my halftone layer, and I'm going to invert it to select everything but the purple, and just hit the delete key, and bam! We've just got our background there. Now from here, if you still didn't like the colors, you could just use the fill bucket and change it up to get something you like. So real quick, too, I'm going to show you... Um, a different effect you can do to kind of get those really cool halftone fades. So I'm going to walk through this again. Again, we're going to select the area we want with the marquee tool. I'm going to go to that flat layer and hit copy. Create a new layer of the same size, or a new uh, Photoshop page for the same size, changing the color mode to grayscale. And instead of just doing a straight fill with my gray, what I'm going to do is use the gradient tool. The gradient tool and do a gradient. So now when I go to my mode and I convert from grayscale to bitmap, again using halftone screen, and I'm going to keep the frequency the same. I'll bump it up just a bit. You see we have this really kind of cool transition going on. I'm going to convert from our bitmap to the grayscale. And then from grayscale to CMYK. Like so my paint bucket, fill the background, select it with the magic wand, and then invert it to get the black. And Coloring it that way. Deselect. I'm going to select it all. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go back to my original page. And create a new layer. Fade. Top tone. And then I'm going to paste it. Bam. I go to my flats. Layer. I'm going to select just the pur uh, purple background, I invert the selection, go back to my fade layer, and delete it, and look at what I got, a really cool fade effect. Um, again, with everything in Photoshop uh, and comic book coloring, there are several different ways to do everything. Real quick, I just wanted to show you a couple of ways that I know how to do it. Um, this isn't uh, the only way or the best way. It's not necessarily the way that Rob Guillory from Chew does his. But uh, these are the ways I know and hopefully get you started in the right direction. I encourage you to uh, subscribe to our channel if this was helpful to you. I'll probably be doing some more of these tutorials. And also uh, like Stash Publishing. Uh, that's Stash like Mustache. Publishing on Facebook. Um, so you can keep up to date with what we've got going on, including uh, more information on this really cool anthology that we've got coming up on with the Seven Deadly Sins. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Bye.